I, oh, oh, we're live. Hi, You're Jeremy. Hello. Hello. Yeah. Oh, we're here. Hey, how are you? <laughs> <laughs> Happens quick. It does. It's very it's, nice to see you. It's, it's always a pleasure. Always a pleasure. We always have a good time yeah. when we chat. So when you said reach yeah. out, what you guys want to do a tasting? I'm like, hang out with Jenna, drink whiskey. I'm in. Please. <laughs> let's do please. it. Let's do it. Let me some yeah. Let's go. yeah, let's do it. So tonight, um, thank you for everyone who is joining in. Um, my name is Jenna Eli, and I'm with the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society of America. And tonight we are here with Jeremy Sears, and we'll get to, you know, who that that how do I do this? That guy is, yeah. um, you know, here cool. in a minute. <laughs> I know I haven't figured it out. <laughs> um, so um, tonight we are going to be tasting through a selection of our mid month outturn releases that are going to be released at one o'clock tomorrow, Eastern time um, on our website at smwsa.com. So I think this will be a, I think we have a pretty, you know, juicy little tasting set up and yeah. I'm excited to taste through these and see what you think and see what I think. And, you know, like we said briefly, drink some whiskey. <laughs> it, when you're sitting around drinking whiskey, it's never a bad time. It's kind of like pizza, right? Even not great whiskey is still good. Like, right? You, you can't be sitting around drinking good scotch and having a bad time. It's impossible, right? So. It, it it is really impossible. So, um, <laughs> I'm we're we're all about a good time tonight. So, That's it. That's um, it. I guess good before we kind of kick off, I want to say hi to everyone. Um, we have Michael Gonzalez oh. here, and we have Evan Stevens. We have Steve here from Boston. Hey, Steve, we just talked, I think, last week or not too long ago. We, we have Charlene and Tim and Harley. Harley talked to you earlier today, too. There's there's a whole, you know. All your peeps are here. Crew of people. Yeah. So thank you for, you know, joining us and hanging out. So Hanging out, guys. Yeah. So, Jeremy, before we kind of get into the whiskey, do you want to kind of, you know, for people who don't know who you are, mm -hmm. um, you know, do you want to kind of give us the inside scoop as to who feel? Jeremy is? Yeah. Uh, I'm just a guy that likes whiskey. No, <laughs> I, have, <laughs> hey, um, <laughs> I have a YouTube channel, so I'm a full-time YouTuber. Uh, my channel is just my name, Jeremy Sires. And oh, I Sires. See, I'm saying that wrong. Everybody does. I don't, you know, it's, it's funny. I don't even correct it anymore. When people say it wrong, my entire life, nobody's ever said it. I had one German humanities teacher my freshman year in college that said it correctly, and I was amazed. The rest of my entire life, not one person has ever pronounced it correctly. Oh, man. <laughs> I wanted to be the second person. And, Dang uh, it. <laughs> and my wife, it's funny. When we got married, I told her that. And after about a year, she's like, man, you're right. People really never get our name right, do they? I'm like, nope. Science. You inherited a rough one. <laughs> All um, right. Well. Um, but yeah, I have self-titled uh, YouTube channel. Uh I guess the best way to describe it is men's lifestyle, but not like fashion, big hair stuff, because I'm not into all that kind of crap, but like whiskey and cigars and knives and leather goods and, you know, grilling barbecue, like you name it, any of the stuff that guys are generally into. Um, that's what we do our channel. And we have a good time over there. Nice. That's what I do. You're like big into, you like coffee too. Aren't you like big into I do love coffee? coffee is another one. Yep. Coffee, all that good stuff. If, if guys yeah. are in, not that it's a, you know, I've had people be like, well, that's a bit sexist. And I'm like, look, we welcome all types. <laughs> there are plenty of women that are into whiskey and cigars and stuff, but it just, it generally tends to be, I mean, my, I think my audience is like 95, five, <laughs> you know, it's like 95% male, 5% female, but please, if you're a female out there, join, we'd love to have a little more diverse crowd on the channel. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, so I guess we're kind of, you know, right up your alley today. We're getting into whiskey so totally into it you guys are a big yeah. reason uh why i've gotten as deep into scotch as i have for primarily historically speaking i was a bourbon guy and i think me and you have talked about this before but just you know for sake of the live <laughs> stream i was born in kentucky and, and really raised around bourbon my entire life so i was a, a pretty staunch bourbon guy and had a bad experience with scotch early on uh, I just didn't, I, I must've gotten a bad one. I don't even remember the scotch was that uh, somebody had given me, but it just was not hitting my palate at that age. It just yeah. tasted band-aids and weirdness and being a bourbon guy, those <laughs> flavors were like, why the hell would anybody want to drink this? So yeah. I didn't touch scotch for years. Uh, and then I got back into it, probably not, but two or three years ago, started dabbling in some stuff and being like, I don't know if my palate has developed or what, but I really enjoy some of this stuff. And then 
I got hooked up with you guys and you guys start sending me some of your stuff. And I'm like, Oh my God, there's a world of stuff out there that is delicious. Delicious. There really is. Yeah. And I think I, I talk to a lot of people on their whiskey journey and they either kind of start with bourbon and stick with bourbon uh -huh. or they start with scotch and stick with scotch. And it's, it's kind of, I guess, more rare, at least in the experiences that I've had to find somebody who just kind of is, in all of it like mm -hmm. all at once and so like that's for me i started you know when scotch whiskey is like my true love and that's where i began and right like getting into bourbon i was like oh it's all like one dimensional and it's all sweet and yep. i'm not like getting these layers of flavor and then over time you know you like you, you mentioned does my palate is my palate changing mm -hmm. is it developing is it me is it my mood like what is it that's making me really love and appreciate so many of these amazing For bourbons sure. out and there. One of the things I tell people about Islas is I know a lot of people when they first get an Isla are like, oh, oh, that's that's a little aggressive. But that was me. Some, <laughs> some people right off the rip love them, which every time I meet I one of those people, I'm like, what's wrong with you? I don't trust you. <laughs> <laughs> because most people, the first time they ha drink an Isla, they have a little bit of a reaction. But uh, it's one of those things that if you give it a chance, though, it really warms up to you. And now I love yeah. them. My favorite types of scotch is a good Isla. I love them. Love them. Yeah. Now, now you love a good Band-Aid flavor. Yeah. The smoke. The smoke <laughs> is what gets me. I think it's because I'm a big cigar guy, which you'll see me smoking tonight. Uh, by the way, if anybody's watching, this is a diesel whiskey row series. These are aged in uh, PX sherry casks. They age the binder. So I think it's a really good cigar to pair with scotches and whiskeys and stuff. Um, but yeah, I think maybe because I'm a cigar guy, I like the smokiness of the Islas. Yeah. And you find that I I know nothing about cigars. I mean, mm -hmm. literally, I know that you light them, and that's it. about it. Uh, I'm I'm very not into that. I know very little. Um, but do you find like even with an Isla whiskey and smoking a cigar that those two things like really come together in harmony? You know, if it's the funny, we're just talking about that. I, I actually think Islas are one of the harder whiskeys to pair cigars with because they're so dominant that you have a yeah. hard time finding a cigar that just doesn't get railroaded by that Isla. Right. Right. Um, most other scotches actually pair very easily with um, one of my favorites is Glendronic 15. That is good. With, I've never had that with a cigar that it didn't pair up well. There's just something about yeah. the oats in that, with that scotch that are, are really good. Um, but Isla's, especially like you get into like your Octomores and stuff like that, that are super aggressively. You know, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you just it just tastes like you're puffing air because they're yeah. so smoke and savory meaty briny just you know it, it does it so it's tough um but every now and then you'll find the, the perfect thing where they they match up and i think i don't know that i've had this one with a because this cigar has got a nice bit of sweetness to it because of that uh sherry aged binder and uh i wonder if that sweetness might help cut through to the sweetness in an isla and kind of counterbalance some of that smokiness i'll have to try that with an island maybe that'll, that'll be yeah. interesting we've got one that's got a little bit of peat in it we don't have an isla but we do have one with a little bit of peat tonight so a little we'll bit of peat tonight so i mean in every tasting i do i have to have a little bit of peat it's just a great you, way to end really the tasting it. so you, you yeah, have to you, do. you do have to end with peat <laughs> right <laughs> you do yes you do <laughs> now it's blown out it's done <laughs> so all right well let's as you're lighting that up, let's uh, get into the first one and, you yeah. know, kind of, yeah, see what we got here. So the first whiskey that we are going to be tasting tonight, we are going to start off with the oldest whiskey um, of the night as well. And that is Cask 113.41. It is called Age to Perfection. And it is a 23-year space side, if I can get this camera to work. There we go. There it is. And there it is. Yeah. And this is at 54.3% ABV and from a refill X bourbon hogshead. I can see. Oh, it's a pretty bottle. Oh, yeah. See, look, you're like way better. <laughs> no, I can't get as close though because my <laughs> camera is literally like six or seven feet away from me. So I can't really get as close. And if I get too far, it gets out of the light. So it's kind of a weird spot. But I love you guys logo, by the way. It's like one of my favorite logos. Yeah, it is very pretty. Especially, it looks nice when you have like all the bottles on the shelf and you just, they're all just. Especially on the vaults so collection good. ones that are gold. Get out of here. Yeah. <laughs> and that like nice embossed label. Yeah, it's great, man. It's good. It's got the little ribbon. 
I don't know. Stuff like that makes me happy. I'm I'm a big yeah. I'm a big you taste with your eyes almost as much as your mouth kind of guy, right? So like But you do. You do. You do. And I tell people that all the time, like with cigar wrappers and stuff, they can they can screw you up. That's why blind tastings with whiskey and stuff can be handy because you really can be thrown off it's in a just, direction based on what you're seeing, you know. Big time. So, I love all right, well, tasting notes, by the way. Do do you guys usually talk about the tasting notes on the bottles or do you go blind and try to come up with your own? Um, so we usually taste like we'll taste it, see what we think, and then I'm always about reading the tasting. Notes. Okay, so I'll wait. I'll wait because this is a great one, and and I agree with very much of it over here. Yeah, I'm I'm excited to dig into this, and yes, our little scrolling thing has it looks like the wrong name on it, um, but this is called Age to Perfection, and we're fifty four point so, three. Yeah, so yeah, so this is we'll just we'll just. She's remove like, it for now. <laughs> yeah, because we'll just one, remove it for now. That's forty-one. Yeah, one thirteen point four one. Yeah, one three two point four one. So it's it's got some teeth on it. It's got she's got some teeth it on it. And it's funny when I first I just because I just opened this today. Um, and usually I have them all open, but for this for some reason I didn't open this one yet. And as soon as I put it in my glass and I nosed it, it reminded me of like a dusty perfume shop, like an old <laughs> vintage perfume shop that's been like closed up for you know my 75 wife. years and my it's wife dusty this one. she said she smelled wine and i and i do get a whiny like a, a little bit of a whiny vibe and it's there's like a yeah. must to it though so i totally get what you mean about an old musty perfume shop because there is like yeah. a earthy, musty dusty so too much into it but like an old book and people make fun of me when i say that but old books have a very specific smell and that smells like an old book. Yeah, this was. <sighs> old books and wine is what I'm getting. I'm getting old there books you go. and wine. I don't, you know, it's weird. Maybe it's like being in an old dusty library with a very old dusty glass of wine. That's what it and reminds like, me of because it's got those did. like. I don't know how else to explain it other than these musty, dusty kind of flavors, but then there's like a, a, a very distinct wine flavor that I'm getting. And it could yeah. be, I've said that. And after you ever get sometimes after somebody says a note, that's all you can get. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, my wife was like, this one smells <laughs> like wine. And then after that, I was like, shit, that's all I can smell. All yep. I can smell is wine now. Yes, it is that, that power of, you know, persuasion that just drops that little note in your head. All right, mm -hmm. I'm tasting it. I might have went a little aggressive on that sip, being this is my first sip of a uh, barrel proof whiskey for the night. Should have gone a little easier on that first. Yeah, sip. yeah, she's the uh, this. It's feisty. It's she's a feisty one. She's got a little. She's there's, got a little heat on her. But there is definitely some gusto to that whiskey. I find you know you. I didn't do it tonight, and I tell people when we talk about whiskey on the channel all the time. I usually drink a warm up whiskey. Going to straight like wet your palate. Yeah. Yeah. And because especially when you're going into barrel proof stuff, I find it oftentimes helpful to your palate and your your esophagus <laughs> to, <laughs> to warm up with like an 80 or 90 proof something to kind of get ready. When you go right into something, it's like 115, 120. It's like, oh, okay, we're drinking. How are we doing tonight? <laughs> yeah. Um, so so what'd you get on that first sip? Um I got just very dusty books. This one. I think I get some leather in there. There's a lot of earthy flavors. There, I yeah. Get, I don't get a lot of fruit in this one. A lot of, especially when I get into space sides and stuff like that, usually there's some fruity notes that I get in them. I'm not really getting any fruit in this. It's all earthy kind of musty, dusty flavors. It, it very yeah. much, the nose very much matches the palate on this one for me. Yeah, I think, yes, I agree with you completely. I think nose and palate on this match 110%. I mean, that is a smooth transition from, from nose to palate without question. And um, if, you're, if you're into super sweet or you like sweeter scotches, I wouldn't think this would be one you would probably enjoy. I don't get a lot of sweetness in this one. Are you getting, usually... Mm -mm. Sometimes on the finish, like afterwards, is like with Isla's, that's where the sweetness comes in for me. I'm getting very little, if any, sweetness on this one. Yeah, I think 
it's almost like a, gosh, it is a very faint sweetness. And I'm just trying to like put my finger on it. And see, I'm taking a yeah. couple of on the cigar because sometimes, <clears throat> some people will say smoking a cigar, and we talked about this before also, will say that smoking a cigar <laughs> with this ruins your palate and you can't get an accurate representation of it. I argue that I always drink with a cigar, so I don't give a shit. <laughs> right. <laughs> and also, I think cigars pull out some interesting, it's a different experience for sure, but I think sometimes it pulls out stuff that you wouldn't get without the cigar. And so many people drink their whiskey with a cigar. You know, I mean, that's a very common pairing, right? Is people with yeah. cigars. It's a huge thing. We, we have members who, you know, we get questions all the time. And luckily, you know, we have Zach, who is kind of our in-house cigar guy. He's the one who knows all about it. So I said, cigar geek. yeah, I send everybody over to him. But um, yeah, and I, I, but I love that. I love that, like, you're experiencing these whiskeys with a cigar and the way that you want to experience these whiskeys. That's how you're going to enjoy these whiskeys. And, and that's what, you know, people all the time are, how do I drink this? Or, um, you know, how do I drink this is, is usually the big question. And, the, you know, I always say, try it neat first. Mm -hmm. oh, um, water. Yeah, try it neat first. And then ha just because I think you should, that's just a personal thing. Um, mm -hmm. But after that, I mean, if you want to put it in Kool-Aid, if you want to, you know, put it on ice if you want to put it in your tea however it is you want to enjoy it enjoy it that way because that's what is that's what whiskey's meant to you know that's why it's here for us to enjoy it the way we want to enjoy it you know, it's funny i was talking to dan with the bourbon junkies and you you guys are friendly with uh, the bourbon junkies also they've been on some of your live streams and stuff before and uh we were talking about that just today that you know some people uh in the whiskey community get really weird about if you put ice or any kind of anything in scott or any kind any kind of whiskey really they think whiskey yeah needs to go and i would agree with that for the most part like i generally prefer whiskey neat and like you said i always start out neat so i get a bead on it before i do anything else with it um but i mean however you enjoy it man if you want some coke in it go for it <laughs> you know what i mean i mean who am I I, wrong? seriously exactly it's, it's you're paying it's, for it enjoy it how you want to enjoy it exactly um you know so yeah I, I, i'm most of the time do you find that most of the time and maybe this is a, a i don't know if this is a completely accurate statement but do you find that most of the time adding water will dull down the sweetness of a scotch um i find that adding a little bit of water definitely changes everything in the whiskey for me right. um I, I noticed the most changes with adding water mm -hmm. with peated whiskeys. Um, that's where I see the biggest change. So yeah, a little bit of water, the nose, it goes. Yeah, it, it, I definitely, I almost find that they become a little more peatier in ways. Yeah. yeah. Mo so, more than not, I find when I add water, it does the opposite of what you think it's going to do. You think it's going to mellow things out and make them a little smoother and a little sweeter. And I found a lot of, a lot of whiskeys get pricklier when you add water. Like, sometimes. Yeah. It's yeah, weird. You know, and again, that's, it's going to be different for everyone, Sure, you know, sure. and that's, that's the great thing about it is, you know, that's it's, I know. it's, I know, but like cast strength whiskey is really like a whiskey tailored to you. You right. get to tailor this whiskey to your liking. However, you're getting it in its, purest like raw yep. form and then you get to take it and completely you know make it yours and i love that about that so all the time about cast strength i'm like they're like why you know everybody these days is getting very proof houndy everybody's a proof hound i'm like no but it allows you to drink it however you want because if it's already watered down to 80 or 90 proof then you don't know that thing could have been magnificent magnificent at full strength get it this way and if you want it at 80 proof just add some water you know what I mean? Right. Yeah. It's, it's um, design. yeah, it's, I was kind of like, think of it like laundry soap. You know how they sell like concentrated laundry soap now? Oh, why not? It's kind of, yeah. Like it's kind of <laughs> the same. Like, do you want to get three loads out of this or do you want to get 300 <laughs> loads? That's, I don't know. It's up to you. <laughs> so, um, yeah. So fun fact about this bottle that, um, some members have called out is, um, I, we were sent the wrong bottle. So this bottle is actually in the shop now. Um, and so I don't have my full collection here with me. So I didn't even, you know, this think to look at that. So we're just, uh, yeah, this one's already in the shop. So we're just, well, hey. you know, we're rolling with the punches tonight. 
hey man, still, it's a good one. It's, it's still great years. whiskey. <laughs> if, if, if you like the milder, sweet, kind of earthier flavored scotches. Old books, dusty, I'd say, yeah, old book, I'd perfume say shops. I put, do you put this any water it? in it? I didn't, but I will. I added a little bit. It got more sour to me. Not in a yeah. bad way. But like Let's... it got more, um, I think oh. that's the only word I can use to explain it. A little bit of the dustiness went away and some of that like yeah. fermenty, winey kind of yes. sour flavor came up. Yes. I'm I'm with you on that. There is like an element of that whiny note that I think we're kind of on the same page. It's yeah. definitely elevated with just, and I put just, I don't have very much in my glass. So I just put two little drops of water, well, but that's all you need. Things from the folks at Scott's Malt <laughs> Whiskey Society, nice little water <laughs> pictures with the dropper comes in really handy. Those come in the tasting kits, that mm -hmm. thing up there. <laughs> mm. Mm. That's interesting. I think it got a little hotter. I, I find it, it's sweeter now for well, me. I was going to say it's a little, to me, on the palate, very opposite. It, it seemed a little more viscous that time around, which shouldn't be the case because when you add water by nature, that should lower the viscosity, right? But it seemed a little, I could see the sweetness on the very front because it's thicker, almost more syrupy. When I was swishing yeah. around. I'm a little obnoxious in the fact that I'm a swisher. I know that's my husband of, does the same thing. I like to. I'm used everything. to it. He's um, over there. I'm like coming out of his nose, <laughs> which like, is so oh, hard. Is that I'm necessary? Like, Relax. <laughs> <laughs> Relax. My wife always does the same thing. She looks at me like, "Is that really necessary?" I'm like, "Yeah, yeah, it is. It is. I like yes. to do it." Okay. Leave me this alone. is how I like to do it. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. It got, I got a little hotter. And a little pepperier. There's like a little more spice to it. Yeah, I, I think I prefer it without water, um, just because I really love that like earthy, dusty mm -hmm. funk about it. Um, it really does kind of take you somewhere. I would agree. So, it's a little more boring with 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 the water. Yeah, right? I'd say I I prefer it without myself. But I, but a fun some funky earthy too. So. Yeah, and fun, some fun facts about this particular distillery is um, it is actually the sister distillery to Distillery um, 108, um, which also makes great peated and unpeated malt. Um, and then it was also this was this distillery was mothballed in 2002, um, and then they just reopened it I think back in 2008. So it sat kind of dormant for a while. So maybe that's where we're getting. This is pre mothball, but I'm just going to pretend that, <laughs> you know, being dormant and dusty, it gathered all of those great notes from it. So, yeah, that's a good one. So, if that's in the shop now because, you know, like I said, we're rolling with the punches and we didn't get the the right one sent to us, but uh, it's still a great whiskey. Yeah. Well, we got to taste it. <laughs> I mean, I'm never going to complain if you send me a 23 year old single malt, right? Like, I, I'm glad we got to taste it. <laughs> no, I'm glad we did too and aged to perfection 23 years. I'm not going to be yeah. mad about that anytime. You nope, want. not at all. So, all right, well, let's get ourselves back on track here. All right, what's and, one of the, uh, what are we doing next? Let's dig into number two. We're doing nailed it. Yeah. Yeah, dude, the <laughs> names you guys in the names are like the best thing ever, right? Nailed it! Like, come on, yeah. I mean, that's whiskey fantastic. should be fun. That's fantastic. It should be, it should be. Yeah, I think too many people take it a little too damn seriously, personally, but yeah, okay, it's um, I think it's meant to be oh, fun. You so, know you didn't do that. And I'm sorry, I'm probably screwing up your whole thing because I run my mouth. No, if you've not at all. Oh, the about. tasting notes. Yeah, we never went over it. Check out this age of perfection. Read those things. This is what, and this is why I love Scotch malt whiskey so much. We are in an old fashioned library before we move downstairs into the cellar and head pat and had pat, what? I can't read. Hold on. And had a taste of a very fine <laughs> old vintage aged to perfection. That is great. Spot on. That's so great. I think they a, know. it's spot on. I agree. And B, like, I don't know. It's just fantastic. There's so many times that I read the notes and like I actually chuckle. I'm like, ah, that's so great. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I guess we can say they nailed it they on those tasting <laughs> notes. <laughs> uh, Mom jokes. Uh, 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 yeah, dude, I get hit with the dad jokes all the time. My kid's <laughs> the biggest dork ever. Oh, I'm not. So, 
don't read them yet. Yeah, we got to taste it first. All right. So the next one that we are going to be totally tasting, different, by the way, totally. this is the right one. To this is the right one, by the way. Um, this is cask 35.282, a 12 year space side in a first fill X bourbon barrel at 57.1% ABV. This is so there much is. different, even right away, just off the first <laughs> sniff than that first one. I'm a I'm a big fan girl of this distillery. Um, do you guys ever discuss the distilleries? I mean, I know you briefly like mentioned some loose stuff, but do you actually talk about the distillery's name, or is that only if you go check out the code list that's on? Uh, yeah, on the yeah. Um, it's so the reason, the big reason that we don't do it is because it, you know you don't want a single cask. Right. Like a single cask is not going to be like what you can go to the liquor store and buy. And actually, this distillery is a great example of that. Um, when I first was getting into whiskey, um, this particular distillery was kind of presented to me, you know, as I was very green into whiskey, getting into whiskey as like a budget kind of whiskey. Um, and right. yeah. <laughs> and, you know, I this distillery is like really you know, iconic in some ways because they were one of the first to ever age in um, or to finish in wine cask. And their whiskeys are just absolutely beautiful. And I think when you're first getting into whiskey that it's a great way to teach your palate and train your palate. Their their whiskeys are, are fantastic. Um, and I'm a huge oh. fan of what they do. Oh yeah, sorry, I'm looking this up <laughs> as we're talking. Yeah, yeah, I've got a bottle of that. Like they're normal, yeah, they're I'm, normal. Um, I am a massive fan of what they do so they you know, are the, i would say for the most part lean like most people when they think of that brand they do think kind of budgety right but which is don't think that <laughs> but i will say for a but it's fantastic like it's, it's great it's one whiskey of the, one of the, the the more i won't say cheap because that gives a bad but i would say that is one of the it's just accessible accessible and inexpensive bottles that i do tell yeah. people if they want to try a scotch like it's a good one right it's they're great and they do so many different finishes. It's great to train your palate. It's right. they're a massive fan of them. Um, so you know, one of the reasons that we don't put you know distillery names on the bottle is because a single cask is so unique and so different than what you're gonna go get at a liquor store. So if you can say, oh well, you know, I'm not a fan of X distillery. Well, yeah. If you have it in single cask form, it's gonna be very different. And I'm not like I don't mean that in a bad way. You know, on the distillery, it's it's not you know, anything of that nature. I think, you know, having been with the society for as long as I've had, I've had this oh, like wow. massive, uh, right. And, but it's <laughs> exposed me to so many distilleries I never even knew existed and distilleries that I go out and I support independently, you know, like this has introduced me to such amazing whiskey and it there's such a bounty too. out there. Bring and that. that's, I, I yeah, was, you guys introduced me to. I never heard anything about them until you guys sent me a bottle, and it was one out of the vaults. And I was like, "This stuff is delicious." What's going on with this distillery? <laughs> I'd never heard of that one, and now apparently it's a big deal that a lot of people know about it. And I was just a dumbass. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's there's so much whiskey out there, and you know this this particular distillery. I think the single cask that we've released from this distillery have just been phenomenal i mean phenomenal and i think if you're just getting into the society these this distillery is a great it, it's just an amazing distillery like from start to finish it's it's brilliant so i will say just on the nose i would never guess Ooh. that is the distillery in a million years <laughs> no, not that i'm quite did you just like sniff it yeah <laughs> man i it's if you get too far in there you'll get burnt there's some vapors but um what's the strength on this one 57.1. Yes, about the same as the last one. Um, I'm not going to say that I'm familiar enough with that distillery. I won't mention the name, but the distillery this is from, that I could pick it out in a lineup. But I am familiar enough that I would, I know this is not, this is nothing like the bottle I have over here. But that's, that's, that's a big reason as to that's why we're so not. Right. That's the reason you guys don't do that. Right. And, you know, too, sometimes, you know, we have a, a brilliant spirits team over in the UK that they sometimes mm -hmm. recast things or will put, you know, they'll finish a, a cask that we take that we, you know, buy from a distillery into another cask. And I don't think it's that's not like a, I guess, fair thing to do to mm -hmm. no, change somebody's, you know, masterpiece into a different masterpiece. And then right. so, yeah, I so it. I think it's just out of respect. And, you know, because single cask 
hard to put a name on them. I make a game. They're so I, different. Every time I get a bottle from you guys, I don't look. I taste it and I try to guess. And then I'll go look at it after. I've not. <laughs> <tried it yet. laughs> One time I was like, this is for sure Ardbeg. I'm like, this is Ardbeg. 100% Ardbeg. It was, it was, uh, I always mispronounce this. K, K I'm going to mispronounce it. Kalila. 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 I, I screw that up completely. No, no. You're Kalila? good. Okay. It was Kalila. Well I thought done. it was Ardbeg. I would have swore up and down. I would have bet one of my children on the fact it was Ardbeg and it was Kalila. <laughs> so I'm glad I didn't bet one of my Rick, children. Rick uh, wrote in a comment saying, I've never had a single cast 35 that I didn't love. And Rick, I am right there with you. I've never had one I didn't love either. Um, I think that they create beautiful, beautiful whiskey. And this one, we're very lucky to be able to put as many out as we do. This one right off the rip to me is way sweeter. It's way more fruity. I'm getting like, like a, yeah, like it's like a fruit oil. I'm almost getting like a raisiny, like a dark dried fruit. Like it smells like it's going to have texture. <laughs> you know, like we were just talking about that, you know, mm -hmm. like it's, it tastes like so and so smells or blah, blah smells or, this you know, not that you go out and fast. big viscosity on this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That like gets your whole palate and it's like, Oil. I'm here to party. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It is way sweeter than the last one. There's still like a little tinge of earthiness in there. I get that in most scotches though, but. There is a little bit, of, but this is a way sweeter. To me, if you like sweet, you're going to like this one way more than the 23. What, what's the year on this one? This one's a 12. And and to your point, I don't know that this distillery, their their standard bottling, the it's you know the so budget, is a super fruity pour. Not that I can remember. But this is nice. This is so good. <laughs> I mean, this is. So good. It has, I'm almost getting like a, oh man, you know what? it's like a very refreshing, like green apple custard, like cold, like very cold. It feels cold on the palate. Nailed um, it. <laughs> they did. They nailed it. It's, it is just, we'll, we'll go I into mean, that. it is so. I'm actually getting that second note. Oh, oh yeah. Oh. I don't know that I'm getting the third one though. Yeah, no, I haven't. I haven't found that yet. Maybe with some water, we'll find it. But um, yeah, maybe with some water. I didn't get that second one. I'm getting like the the fruitiness on the front. Yeah, this is doing that thing that some scotches do, and every time it does it, I love it. And the fact that it's kind of oily and it's coating my palate in about ten or fifteen seconds after I've finished the 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 particular sip, I get this like almost mouthwatering sweetness. Yeah. On a late finish. Like it's this lingering like coating in your mouth. It's almost like a mouthwatering sweetness. Yeah. It kind of reminds me of like a Jolly a Rancher. Yeah. It's so good when scotches do that. Every now, sometimes Isla's will do it and they'll beat you in the mouth with smoke. And then on the rear, after a while on the rear, that sounds weird. Uh, <laughs> after a while, there'll be this, this really syrupy sweet coating that you're left with. And I love it every time a scotch does that. Yeah. This is, if you are a fan of those like classic Speyside orchard fruits, those big pear green apple, this is literally like a very cold, refreshing green apple custard. It is just, this is a very good whiskey. There's the chocolate. Jenna, we got to get mm. you on some cigars. Are you like anti-smoking mm. because of the, the potential health side effects? I mean, are you, are you no, like, like I, I've been to cigar bars. I've, I've done the whole thing and like, that some of the aromas are so, so fantastic. They mm -hmm. smell so good. But I think my thing is, it's like, I don't like that I have to brush my teeth five million times after you smoke a cigar to just get your mouth back to normal. Like you have to like power wash your mouth with bleach <laughs> after you smoke a cigar. No, you, just, so, you, just, you just take a big swig of art bag. You swish it around your oh, mouth and it's all gone. It, it, it just like resets your palate. Reset your palate. No, you know, it's funny. I hear a lot of people that aren't cigar smokers. I smoke like two to five cigars a day. So I don't 
I'm numb to that, right? Like I've heard people yeah. that are smokers say that, and it always makes me chuckle because they're like, oh my God, the next morning I woke up and it tastes like a cat shit in my mouth. <laughs> I'm like, that's so aggressive. They're like, why does it leave such a bad taste? And I'm like, I don't know. I don't get that. I smoke a ton of cigars. But, I don't get that anymore, but I have heard a lot but of people. I guess we could relate that to whiskey because when I first started getting into peat and malt, you know, I remember, I remember the whiskey that like kind of broke me oh, yeah. in, in the world of Pete. And mm -hmm. I remember the first time I tasted it and I was like, I think I tasted it for a week afterwards. <laughs> I was like, you burp like it's not later. coming like, out. Oh, oh, what the hell is that? Right. You know, but now here I am, like I'm a massive Pete head. So I think it's like anything, you know, yeah. um, I just haven't, I haven't put in the time or the effort to enjoy something like that. Well, um, and did you, that's, your, did you say your husband's a cigar guy or no? Yeah, my he loves cigars. He okay. loves whiskey. He loves he loves he's a bourbon to, cigar guy. So I have to get you guys a dress or somewhere you'll be where I can send you. I'll have to send you a couple of these cigars for you guys to try because the fact that these are aged in sherry barrels and it's a it's a Connecticut broadleaf wrapper. Um which that, I don't know what that means, but you said you said Pedro Jimenez and I'm yes, my little antenna or okay. <laughs> So Speaking my language, <laughs> it's got a Connecticut brother for any cigar guys or, or ladies that might be on the live tonight. It's got a Connecticut. It's a, again, it's the diesel whiskey row sherry cask. Uh, and it's got a Connecticut broadleaf wrapper and the binder is aged in uh, Pedro Jimenez uh, sherry barrels. So it's got this really nice fruitiness, but Connecticut broadleaf wrappers are notoriously very chocolatey. So I wasn't getting this chocolate off of this, but then with a little cigar and maybe it's the chocolate in the cigar, not the ch chocolate in the, in the, the whiskey itself, but I did start getting a chocolate note. So maybe when the tasting panel was writing these notes, they were also smoking a cigar. I don't know. So yeah, I think this whiskey yeah. is, I don't even want to add water to it. Cause I think it's perfect mm -mm. Mm -mm. the way it is. Like I don't like this would be a whiskey that, We'll start here and we'll very soon be like here. <laughs> yeah. I think so, nailed this perfect. Um, oh, and to read they the, nailed it. The read the yes, flavor notes. Please uh, do. Notes. Green apple and pineapple, followed by chocolate praline cupcakes, diluted fruit flavored mints. Mm. So the mint thing I kind of get because there's like a very like refreshing, like you know, when you swish with mouthwash mm -hmm. and your mouth gets like cold. It's kind of on the this, mid back though, right? Yeah, but it's there. Mid back. But it's there. There mm -hmm. is like a very like like refreshing, very bright quality to this that I really love. And, and I sure get the green apple. You were mentioning that. I love I this. That. There's a very it's a, it's a very distinct fruity sweetness and it's a fresh fruity sweetness. You kind of have to pick out the apple, right? Like sometimes the flavors they kind of hit you as like a generic kind of thing and you kind of have to really pay attention to to taper them into a specific thing like apple. But the first thing I'm hit with is like a generic fruity sweetness. And then the more it goes, it's, it's a little too fresh and crisp to be like a red fruit. It goes more like green apple, right. which is exactly what they called. And I do get little hints of something kind of almost tropical, which is where I think they're getting that pineapple. Um, it's yep. fleeting. It's fleeting, but it kind of like whiffs in and out a little bit. I didn't get the chocolate. I will say I didn't get the, yeah. the chocolate cupcake thing until I was smoking it with the cigar. That did pull out some chocolate notes. I don't know if that was the Connecticut Broadleaf wrapper influencing and I was tasting the chocolate in there or if it was in the scotch, but I did get it afterwards. And then that mint is that fresh kind of almost that's, apple, mint, green apple kind of thing. Yeah. So, but that's you. Know, that's, you, you, know, you brought out a, a great point when it comes to tasting whiskey. So because you kind of said that generic like fruit, you're mm -hmm. getting that like generic fruit right. flavor. And that's a that's I think when, you know, you talk about tasting notes. I know for me, like when I first was getting into whiskey, it was like, I felt a lot of pressure to right. come up with tasting notes. I was like, I'm not, I'm not tasting bananas foster in this. Like it just tastes like whiskey, you so, know? Yeah. And I mean, it's, it's, it is what it is. And it was like very intimidating for me. Um, but I think, you know, you bring up a great point that, okay, I taste fruit. I don't know what it is, but there right. is a generic, that's such a great way to describe it. You know, fruit profile here. So let me just kind of like take a minute, right? Let's take another sip and let's like really dig in and, and like, what is this reminding me of? Is this right. reminding me of maybe a dessert, you know, my mom made as a kid or, mm -hmm. 
you know, like the applesauce I got in the cafeteria or where, place it. There. Yeah, like place that, you know, that flavor into a memory and then like you just kind of expand. And I think that's what really was beneficial for me, you know, as far as like tasting notes go um, that, Whoa. you know, you just start somewhere and then just expand on it. Yeah. And, and to expand on what you're saying there, and I've said this on my channel many times for, because I think everybody feels that way, right? I think a lot of people, they get into tasting whiskey and they watch people doing whiskey reviews and stuff and they're, calling out all these really extravagant notes and they're drinking it and they're like, shit, I don't get any of that. Like, what are yeah. these people talking about? Right? Like, I don't, I don't get any of that. And then you feel like either a you're missing out on something or these people are lying. You're like these people. Right. Yeah. Through. And that's not the case. The case is it does take a little while to develop your palate and not to be afraid to say whatever. It, there is no wrong tasting note. And I tell people that all the time. They're like, well, it's you know, so true. That. And I've had actual, I've seen actual people do videos where they call people out for giving extravagant tasting notes. And they're like, I got it. I'm like, look, no tasting it's, note is the wrong tasting note because everybody's no. palate is different. Everybody's palate. There obviously are some common themes, right? Like you should probably sure. get somewhere in this arena. But even if you don't even get that, that's fine. Right. Whatever, We're all exposed food, to different things. The food you ate before the tasting is going to affect that. Uh, the fact your environment. that environment cigar is going to be very yeah. different than your tasting. Um, you know, a lot of stuff. So it's not wrong. Just enjoy it, taste it, see what you're tasting. Like you said, I like to start out with broad flavors and then try to get more specific as I narrow it down. Yeah. I, I should agree it. with you more. Have fun, right? Like it's supposed to be fun, people. Yeah. <laughs> Whiskey, for God's sake. <laughs> All right. Well, enough fun. Mm. Okay, Nailed. we need to stop having fun. Um, are you ready for some Pete? Man, Pete is my love language, okay? I know Matthew J. Ryan. So I don't, Matthew J. Ryan is an incredible member of ours and he is the tar life king. He is the king of the peated whiskeys. Oh. Um, and he's here with us tonight. And so- Who's Matthew J. Ryan? Yeah. Oh, I see him in there. There he is. Yeah. Matthew J. Ryan. Yep. He's, so, he, is our, he is our tar life- he is, he's the king uh, of, of the peak. King, so the, 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 did he, did he get any of the, uh, didn't you guys have one called tar pit not too long ago or something like that? It was like a, yes, I'm 99.999% sure that he does have that whiskey. I would hope he did. <laughs> if he did, that's a disservice. <laughs> I think another good one. It wasn't, uh, I don't think it was a, a Isla, but you guys had sent me at some point was the gun smoke over the moor. That was <gasps> Amazing whiskey. It was such a good whiskey. <laughs> God, that was so good. Even my wife liked it. I think, and she, if, I think we yeah. did one of the videos she was in, and um, she doesn't even like that kind of stuff. And I'm pretty sure she liked that one. That whiskey is absolutely fantastic. Um, and the Scotch for Dummies are here too. So, hey guys. Scotch nice for Dummies. I love those guys. Yeah. Those guys are great. Dude, this one, the name. This is all right. Yo, yeah. Let's. And I know we're on a live stream with you guys. You guys are like, oh, quit kissing their ass. I generally like all these people. I'm not kissing their ass. I love Jenna. <laughs> Me and Jenna have talked for a long time now. I love what I these guys do at Scotch Malt Whiskey. I think it is. And like, I mean, Dr. Blowtorch. If you don't like that name, I can't be your friend. I don't know what to tell you. That is fantastic. <laughs> it is a great name. It is a great name. So. This is cask 122.37 Dr. Blowtorch. It is a nine-year Highland that was distilled on Valentine's Day in 2011 and from a second fill ex bourbon barrel. Yeah. Valentine's Day. Lots of, lots of love in this whiskey. Yeah. Doesn't yeah. smell. It smells like I got a hate and anger. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. This is my first time nosing this. Oh, God. that's. I just opened it. There's oh my gosh. There's definitely some salty brininess going on in this one. There is. Oh man. Okay. So this, Ooh. this particular whiskey comes from, I'm, I'm sure people are so tired of me talking about this distillery because I'm looking it up. You guys have got me on this whiskey. I'm not, yeah. I'm not allowed to have favorites and I don't have favorites. I don't. Um, oh, yeah. But I'm, yeah. I'm such okay. a, I am such a massive, massive fan of this distillery for so many different reasons. Um, so what's really cool about them is, and this oh. is also one of the things I personally love about the society. So you have distilleries who um, will just essentially create malt for blends. So their sole purpose is to just create malt that goes into blended whiskey. 
Um, and you have distilleries like this who have the potential to create up to or at least 11 different distillates under one roof. So they have many different types of stills. They have traditional pot stills. They have pot stills with rectifying plates uh, and they have continuous stills. So they can make not only grain whiskey, which they make from 100% malt barley, uh -huh. they can create up to 11 or like uh, at least, I'm sure they make more now, um, different types of distillate, which is very cool. Awesome. Um, and this this particular this particular um, distillate for what we're tasting tonight is essentially made to add like complexity to their blended whiskeys. Oh, okay. Yeah, and so to be able to have this in single cask form is I think a really special thing. And sure. you know, that's one of the things I personally love about society is that you're able to taste whiskeys in single cask form from distilleries, you would never even get to taste like period because right. it just goes into a blend. And so. Well, and that's what I tell people all the time about you guys and why that is. And, and I had somebody comment that actually they can find it in their area. And I don't know if maybe they live in Scotland or something and it's more common over there or what's going on. But like, I don't get a lot of single barrel scotches in my area. Like they're all blends. Like I don't, I just don't see them on the shelves around here. Maybe I'm missing it but it's really special for me to get a single barreling of a scotch. I think that's really a cool experience that I don't get otherwise. Um, I am embarrassed to say, I just looked up cause I'm cheating. I looked up the distillery while you were, I don't, mm -hmm. I'm not familiar with that distillery. I, oh, I'm, I'm embarrassed. We, to say that's not one I'm familiar we, with. We can schedule a call and I can give me the, the give you. Down. Oh yeah. We can. Yes. Um, I tell you what's one, really cool. Salt. It is. Salt. This whiskey is, so good. If you, okay, so if you are a fan of like that medicinal, like hospital y, like <laughs> iodine, bandage, bandage, like that smell, yeah. you know, that you're kind of repulsed by, but when you taste it in a whiskey, you're like, oh, this you is want the best more. thing. I don't know yeah, why. Like, this, oh, why do I want to eat band aids. I don't understand it. This, <laughs> yes, this is that whiskey. Mm -hmm. This is definitely that whiskey. I'm so jazzed about this right now a light smoke but oh, not a ton so more than the smoke is is a, a very distinct band-aid flavor for me i'm getting a i'm getting salt air in band-aids yep this is this is a rickety old abandoned haunted hospital on a seaside <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> that has this is where the cask have aged in a haunted old could this, seaside hospital could this haunted old hospital be a band-aid factory or something or is it just, yes is it the hospital that had band-aids in it is that where you're they going? had lots of band-aids okay, and like the wind and the sun have like melted the band-aids <laughs> onto the cask <laughs> and infused the cask with the band-aids uh what this is, is fantastic is that? i hate it when i get a whiff of something and it's you ever get that where it's a very familiar smell you're like i know what that is yeah but you can't place it you can't there, place it here. yeah is it cinnamon? No, it's not cinnamon. It's it smells sweet, like a like doctor's a, office. It's like a sweet, spicy kind of underneath all the band aids. Yeah. Um, like a. What is that? It's almost like anise. Like a. Yeah, 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 like, yeah. yeah I think that's what it is. Like that licorice, almost kind of. Because it's like, but a, like anise, not the fake licorice, like the real, like, like the real like, little star looking. Yeah. And you get it. Yep. Yes. Yes. I was going to say cardamom, but I think that was totally off on that. I was like, wait a minute. People are going to think I'm an obnoxious prick, A, for saying cardamom. Oh, <laughs> man. I think I got it wrong. I think anise is what it is. Yeah, this this is. Yeah, that's gosh. good. That's this real. whiskey has me so excited mm -hmm. about everything. <laughs> it is. The nose on this is, I mean, it's like a horror film, you know, like in a creepy old hospital and oh man and the strongest I'm very one, into this just a, just a little yes bad bit yeah we kind of kept it in the in a nice little that under 60 percent range which is kind of rare usually we have doctor's blowtorch apt yeah very aptly named bottle because the doctor the band-aid the blowtorch it does have a little bit of heat on it but it smooths out very nicely Big time. Yeah. There's a little bit and, on the front, but it smooths out very nicely. And I'm getting just, I know people are going to say I'm full of shit, but 10, 15 seconds after there's a nice little bit of sweetness in the background there. Just a little bit. 
Nice. It's a it's nice. Got a really nice. Yeah, there is like a little puff of sweetness. Mm -hmm. Little puff right there at the end. And again, yeah, but it's like I apologize for being the guy that's ruining my palate, as some people say, by smoking a cigar with this. But no, I enjoy it how you want to enjoy it. I'm gonna send you some of these, Jen. I'm telling you. <laughs> I have to. I have to. I guess break my cigar palate. You and your hubby go Much out on like the back porch, pour you some with doctor, this. <laughs> pour you some doctor's blow torch and get one of these cigars. Yeah. And you're not gonna have a bad time. Yeah, it's actually really fantastic. This cigar worked really well with that last one. You nailed it. That yeah, would be another really good one to have this with. It went really, really well. Yeah, that that whiskey's just beautiful. But if you are a fan of that, just hospitally mm -hmm. band aidy bandage iodine. Mm -hmm. Neosporin, you know, <laughs> all, first aid kit, yep. like aromas, you know, both on the nose and the palate. This is totally a whiskey for you. So um, second fill ex bourbon. Yeah, oh. second fill. So maybe that's why we're getting that just like little tiny puff of sweetness. Um, you know, because so, it is second fill. And you can school me a little bit because, like I said, I'm primarily a, or I shouldn't be primarily these days. I have, I drink as much scotch as I do bourbon, but historically I'm a bourbon guy. So, second fill means this barrel that this thing was aged, it was filled two times previously, right? So, it was, yeah. Uh, so, it, it held bourbon. bourbon. Yep. Right. And then held scotch whiskey and then held scotch whiskey again. So, it's the third time it's actually held spirit or right. new big spirit but a this damn old barrel if it's gone through three different spirits because i mean maybe not i mean, I mean you generally got to age a bourbon at least what three years usually you don't usually have too many bourbons younger it, than three years yeah and then i don't know a scotch i don't know where the cast came from so i don't know where that barrel came from so it yeah. could be it could be a really old one it could be a not so old one um bigger correct or small hogsheads they're bigger yeah, so I kind of like to think of a hogshead as like a Frankenstein cask, um, <laughs> because basically a hogshead is a is bourbon barrels. The staves are broken down and then just rebuilt to a, a bigger size. So uh, barrels are right at about two hundred. Hogsheads are right at about two fifty. Okay, so um, okay, I think or two and two twenty, um, and so that's kind of how I like to think of a hogshead is like a Frankenstein cask because Franken it's barrel. built of. Yeah, you don't know. Maybe you have like a whole bourbon barrel and then some staves from another bourbon barrel. Right. Where those are coming from, I'm I'm not 100 percent sure. So, so the first that's kind of how I like to think of it was a hogshead, and these last two have been ex bourbon. Yeah, but I think that's why we're getting just that very subtle little whisper of sweetness um, from the bourbon from this. Yeah, because it's this whiskey is so good. This one is. I, I'm I'm torn. I'm torn between this one and the nailed it. I feel like it's a very different experience. So I feel very like, different. I feel like it's going to depend on if you if you lean into the little bit smoother, lighter, fruitier scotches, or if you're more into the, you know, band aids and iodine and and yeah. aggressive kind of. Well, I, I don't want to say aggressive because it's a smooth, but smooth. It's it not, isn't. I don't find this to be like overly no. peaty. Mm -mm. It's more of that, like salty. Mm -hmm. it's more salty than like aggressive peat. I thought I had some smoke in it in the beginning there, but I'm trying to No, It's like, there's a little bit in there. Yeah. It's very subtle. It's subtle though. It's not anything yeah. like a, like a Ardbeg or no. Know. Do you find yeah. Lagavulin more medicinal than Ardbeg? Mm. I find Ardbeg smokier and sweeter and Lagavulin more medicinal personally. Yeah. I, yeah. I mean, I have opinions. <laughs> she's, she's like, I have opinion. I don't want to say, cause I don't I have opinions. Me. I, my favorite thing about distillery 33 is I love that like mechanical, like mm. warehouse oily, like car engine note that I think just based on that. So synonymous with like that distillery. Lagavulin. No, you like Ardbeg more. I think it's, I love that oily, mechanical, just like, it reminds oh, me of like, I like, I feel like Nicolas Cage should be the spokesperson for them. Like <laughs> fast or what was it? Uh, Gone in 60 seconds. Like yeah, I always yeah, think yeah. of that when I drink that whiskey, just because it has this just very like 
I don't know. It just makes me think of like garages full of old cars and me and my buddy Taylor, who I do a podcast with occasionally. Um, we used to do it a lot more often. We've both been busy. Haven't been doing it lately. Uh, he leans Lagavulin. I lean Ardbeg. I tend to like Ardbeg. I mean, they're both excellent. I like them both. They're both on my shelf behind me, but I tend to like Ardbeg's over a Lagavulin. I don't know. And we, I don't know. I think, yeah, I think, I mean, Isla is a just playground of incredible whiskey. I mean, I just, I don't even like know what I'll do when I step foot there. They're going to have to kick me out. <laughs> They're going to have to like put me on the ferry and say, you cannot come back here. <laughs> um, Scotch. Because I think that the whiskey that is made in such a, a small area is just really, really special. Because it's a little There's some really special. There's some really special stuff that comes agree. at so Isla. Yeah. The uh, Scotch test dummies, they said a good whiskey will override a cigar. That, that, that's true. That's me and uh, I don't know if you guys were in here. I don't know which one of the, the dummies are in here, um, but we were talking about that earlier, that a good Isla, it's hard to pair a cigar up with because all you taste is the Isla. It really drowns a yeah. cigar. High proof and peat work good with cigar. You know, they do, but back to what we were just saying, I, it's, it's hard, right? Uh, I don't find that they ever clash. But I just find that a lot of times a good Isla will just overpower a cigar. And it's it's hard to – like um, I'm trying to think what that – I had a pairing not too long ago. Oh, it was uh, – I had a pairing that was uh, – um, it was a bourbon. It was a uh, Elijah Craig Toasted Barrel, and I had it paired with a um, – I can't think of the cigar right now. I'm drawing a blank. But anyway. <laughs> don't ask me. I don't know. Yeah. It was one of those situations <laughs> where though they, they were better than the sum of their parts right? Like together, it was a better experience than the two were. By yeah. Themselves. Uh, yeah. Where with, but do you kind of, do you kind of think of that whole cigar and whiskey thing? I mean, it's kind of like food, you know, you can have two. Sure. I always think of that moment in Ratatouille when like, <laughs> what is he like eats the grape and then he eats the cheese and it's like, Oh my God, this is the best thing ever. <laughs> I always kind of, yeah. But like, can you kind of think of cigars and whiskey as that same kind of element where, you can have two that are really great or two that are not so great, but together sure. there's something just magical. Oh, somebody just called it Ashton Hicks. Thank you, sir. Kind sir. It was a sin compromiso. Those two together. I love a sin compromiso. It's a great cigar. I love that new Elijah Craig toasted barrel. I think it's an excellent bourbon, but together it was like what you were. It was a ratatouille moment. Ratatouille <laughs> moment. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, they were magic and it's still one of yeah. my favorite pairings. Uh, and it's it's so hard to pair because most of the best pairings I've found with cigars and whiskey were complete by accident. I'll try to logically be like, oh, this cigar's got some chocolate and this whiskey's got some of this and, and I'll try to get all technical with it. And then yeah, it works. Sometimes it, it doesn't. doesn't work out. And yeah. then you'll just be randomly smoking a cigar and you'll snag a whiskey off your shelf, kind of not thinking and be like, magic, there it is. <laughs> it's just kind of the random pairing sometimes yeah. that hits perfect. The ratatouille moment. I like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But yeah, <laughs> Isla's, Isla's tend to be my sweet spot other than that Glendronic we talked about. I'm a big fan. Yeah. Of that. <laughs> this though. We, we, we have lots of Glens that we bottle here at the society. So well, I guarantee you, you do for sure. <laughs> I, I, I wish I could say I, this Dr. Blowtorch, man, I, I, if you had to call a favorite for the night, what would you call? Oh, I'm not allowed to do that. Oh, you're not? Okay. I mean, you guys don't write personal, it's, it's, it's no, no, it's not, it's not like a it's not like a work, it's a personal thing. Uh, um, gotcha, because gotcha. I think because I have whiskeys that I I don't want to put that like pressure on like a whiskey to like perform every time. You know what I mean? Like yeah. every time I have this whiskey, it's going to be this amazing experience. Because well, it's all single barrel. It's impossible, right? Because because you guys right. have single barrels, it's a totally different experience. You could have the exact same distillery and two different barrels are going to be totally different experiences. Right. And I just, you can have one whiskey one day and it's like the best thing you've ever had. And then mm -hmm. you can have it a week later and you're like, what the hell, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and so I don't, it's really hard for me to like put a favorite. I really love the 122.37, the one we're tasting now. It's good. Because I love the elements in this whiskey. I love that medicinal, like haunted hospital, Band-Aid, yep. you know, I, I love that in a whiskey. Um, but you know, the 35.22, like that had such a, 
I'm a huge dessert person and I love to bake. And so like that whiskey reminds me of like baking and I would have a glass of that when I'm baking some kind of like apple tart or something. And sure. the, the first whiskey we tasted, you know, that old dusty book note is, I love that in a whiskey. It's, it's, I have like such fond memories of that particular tasting note, you know, in, in so many areas of my whiskey life that that really resonates with me. So I love them all for different reasons. Right. I get you. <laughs> People ask me sometimes, you know, uh, put a comment on my channel or something like, what's your favorite whiskey? And I'm like, oh, God. Like, you can't you, pick you one. Can't do that because it what's my favorite whiskey food. right now? Yeah. Right. right. Is, like, at this right. moment, it's the one I'm drinking. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> okay. Here, here's a question for you. And I'm sorry if I'm derailing your live stream. What is your favorite pre-whiskey meal like do you have a meal that you have found because i have one in particular in my head that generally if you have that meal whiskeys always seem to taste better after that meal you, you know, have like a favorite like combination like I, if you're gonna have a nice night you like to have this meal with then sit down and have a nice scotch yeah i particularly do have one so i was wondering if i'm interested know. to know because for me i'm not like a food in whiskey person like a meal like, I like to drink them at dinner the same time. right but like the connection for me like i i love dessert and whiskey mm -hmm. so like chocolate cake oh yeah and whiskey mm -hmm. or like eating a big piece of just like gooey chocolate cake and then like having a glass of whiskey is probably that's because your palate is all coated with all that chocolatey sweetness and then the whiskey kind of mixes with it and gets real happy especially a peated whiskey like that combination is just heaven on earth um now see for so me that's it for me what is the, i'm curious to me, know it's 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 a big old ribeye oh like okay a ribeye steak and then some usually any whiskey, but sp specifically something about the charred, fatty, meaty thing with like a nice charred ribeye and then a yeah. good Isla and a cigar. Like, yeah. that's a heavenly situation. <laughs> but there's something about every time, we, and I've talked about this, anytime I have Mexican, whatever whiskey I have that night, it's not great. It's, I mean, it's okay. Yeah. It's not bad. But like, I don't ever have my favorite whiskey experiences after I have Mexican or after I have, but is that, is that because you're having like something that has like a element of spice to it or yeah, heat to this, it, or is that kind of, kind of wrecks your palate a little bit and makes it a little more sensitive. And then when you drink whiskey, it almost kind of stings and burns and it feels hotter than it really is. Yeah. Where when you eat a nice meaty grilled ribeye with all that fattiness and stuff, like, I don't know. I just feel like for some reason, some of my best whiskey experiences ever were after a big old bone in ribeye. <laughs> <laughs> with you know like a loaded baked potato get nice and full then you go up and pour yourself a nice glass of isla or really any i'm just using isla as an example because i think the the charred kind of meat, a lot of isla right. to me have a meaty kind of situation in them um, yeah but perhaps that like char in the steak is like preparing your palate yep for kind of the char elements of a whiskey I think the fattiness of it does something. I don't know what it is. Yeah. I think the fat, because in particular, a ribeye. And I know people are going to be like, oh, shut the hell up. <laughs> but I'm telling you, a ribeye is a fattier cut. And I like a ribeye with whiskey after even more than I like like a strip or a filet with cigar or with a. Mm. I think that the oily, fatty nature, I don't know, it does something to your palate. And I think it's, it's, um, I don't know, man. Big old bone. It sounds ribeye. good. <laughs> Big old fat bone in ribeye. It sounds good. And I love the star. You, I could die happy man. Yeah, my my husband always used to do a tri tip. Do mm. you guys like? I'm learning that tri tip was a like a California thing. I smoke them. Um, yeah. So he would like, and the ends would get like they mm -hmm. were like fatty, and yep. then like really charred, and it was like candy almost. It was so good. Like I just wanted the end pieces. Uh -huh. Um, so I can kind of I get what you're saying, like that fatty charred like a little good. bit of sweet oh that sounds good right now <laughs> see i'm telling you some of my best uh in scotch test time is just said in butter yeah and i always put a big hunk oh. of butter on my steak or a lot of times i'll sear it on an iron skillet with butter after i do like a reverse sear on it or something like that 
but yeah, there's something about that fatty element of just red meat and the fatty element and the char with an Isla and a cigar. Yeah. Oh, God, it's just good. It's just good, man. It's, it's making me hungry. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> I didn't eat a whole lot of dinner tonight either. So I'm like, I didn't I'm, either. I'm like, oh, why? Maybe I can find a steak in there and just whip that up. I don't know. <laughs> Get a big old tomahawk ribeye and eat yeah. and give us some Isla. I'm telling you, try it. It won't be a bad time. I promise you. I'm <laughs> when it comes to whiskey and food, I am like I eat everything. I will when it comes to whiskey, I don't turn my nose up to anything. Like I want to taste everything. So to your I'm note, all for it. I like to drink whiskey with food. Yeah, I, I don't I like to, with my meal have whiskey. Yeah, I will drink. I don't or whatever. I I after that's me. So I want to enjoy the meal for what right. it is. Like it's like with I just want to like. Be in the moment with my mm -hmm. food. Mm -hmm. I agree. 100%. So, but there's, yeah. you know, I feel like whiskey and cigars and being, you know, when you're talking about ribeyes and stuff, it's, it's all that whole like indulgence thing, right? It's indulging in some of the finer things and taking a little time, to just enjoy being alive. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like enjoy yeah. some of the fun, enjoy life, have a good time, right? I tell people all the time, I'm like, that's an important thing. Take a little time every day just to have a good time relax yeah enjoy yourself <laughs> yeah and i think you know with a whiskey it's it's so nice to do that you know at the end of the mm -hmm. day whether you're having the best day of your life or the worst day of your life or just an okay day of your life it's um right it's a it's a really nice way to just kind of take a moment to reflect in a way um at least for me it's uh it's like a very special time for me it's a mm -hmm. time to like i don't know i usually share it with my husband and it's like a like it's I like look forward thing. to that at the end. Of, yeah. Like, like I look forward just, to that at the end of the day or even with yourself, like bond with yourself, like have well, a I moment with yourself. All time and, my wife's not a big fan of cigars. So yeah. <laughs> I sit up here by myself almost every night, but you know, and yeah. not to kiss you guys ass because I'm on a live stream with you guys, but that's one of the things I also <laughs> like about some of your bottles is some of those bottles are truly special bottles. Like yeah. there was one that I had that was like, I don't remember, but I think it, yeah, it's a 38 year scotch. I mean, give me a freaking break. I'm trying to watch my language on here. Give me a freaking break. 38 years. Anytime you taste any scotch that has been in a bottle for 38 years, whether it ends up being a fantastic experience or not, whether you love the scotch or not, it's a special experience that you're tasting something that has been right. aging for 38 years. I <laughs> like, know. You know. It's, you know what I mean? So, yeah, I, I think I part of this. It even before I, I came on board, you know, as somebody who does this, you know, for a living for, for this society, you know, I was so intrigued by all of these single cask and kind of what that meant. And I think, you know, and I'm not trying to just, I'm not selling anyone. Like I genuinely believe in this, you right. know, that we, we really do. There are some whiskeys that come through here that are just like, it's an emotional thing. It's, um, yeah, they're I've really, really special. Like, I've seen you get almost I like do. a little joke. It's, I'm like, that's why Jenna's my girl, man. Anybody that gets yeah, that like, like whiskey, those are my people. <laughs> I don't know, because you you think of whiskey and it's like these are there are human hands behind every mm -hmm. single like glass you pour, and they yep. created it and they moved those barrels and they worked those stills and they harvested that grain and like yep. it's if you really kind of dial that back, it's, it's really a very humble, it's a very yeah. humble drink. And I, I really think that I it's just meant to be, thing. yeah. And like, it's just sure. meant to be appreciated and enjoyed. And that's so many hands went into like getting this here for us today. And I, I don't know. Well, I and I'm a big that fan of a really in, cool a, thing. in the world. And I know we're going a little deep here, so sorry, guys. My apologies. <laughs> uh, but Get your tissues be, out. <laughs> yeah. In a world where everything is technology and social media and we're all over the place and we're distracted by yeah. devices on our phones all the time, it's just good to take a little time, turn all the shit off, sit back, have a nice bottle of something that was handcrafted been in a bottle for since before the internet existed or been in a barrel since before any of that crap was around Yeah, been going for hundreds of years. And, um, you know, just kind of take a minute, just take a minute. Yeah. You know? I don't feel like people do that enough these days. So, yeah, it's, it is, it's, 
it's the right thing to take a minute with. So it is. Sorry. Yeah. Little, sorry, guys. I apologize. No, little, don't we, don't apologize. I'm we're just not, to I will, and we're going into fucking <laughs> theories and shit. <laughs> I will I will get I will get deep on whiskey any day of the week. I think it's mm -hmm. It is, it is like I live and breathe this every day of my life and I feel so fortunate to do so. And I, mm -hmm. I think it's a very, very special thing. And so Sorry. I'm, I'm on board 110%. So, well, is with that, better? is this getting better the more it's opening oh, the way? Have you, I finished mine. Oh God. Because, you know, <laughs> that's another thing is a lot of times I like to, especially the fresh bottle, let it sit for a minute. And the longer this is sitting here and I'm sipping it, the better each one of these. I'm getting a lot more sweetness than I was earlier. Yeah, it's it's a really it's a really fantastic whiskey. Um, and Michael J. Ryan actually asked how many bottles of this we're going to have. Um, we have just about 100 bottles of these um, of the 122.37. So Snatch um, we have a, yeah, yeah we've that got, kind of thing. it's a good one. This is it. So I'm going to actually share the full list of everything that's coming out tomorrow. Um, and so let me... List? Well, we have six coming out tomorrow, so we just oh, okay, okay. Technically, we taste technically we tasted two of the six because <laughs> yeah. we got sent the wrong one and we just went on with it because it was that good. Um, mm -hmm. But I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and share the full outturn list. Um, so let me get that up on the screen, and I hope you can see it. So there it is. So. so we have um, a 112.75, oh, yeah. which is very exciting, and a first fill break that's been shaped, toasted, and recharred. That's in our deep, rich, and dried fruits flavor profile, which is incredibly popular. Um, and that one won some awards, too. So that is definitely one to kind of keep your eye on. Um, we have the one that we were supposed to taste, 113.42, forest foraging. Um, that's also a 23-year space side. Look at that. Um, and then we have that do my really read it. It's yeah. My fennel. What is it? Do my phenols look big in this? <laughs> I that's a good one. That's an Isla. Gets yeah. So that's heavily that is... in that category. Get some of that right there. That'll be yeah. And a recharge hogshead, which have been so brilliant. We've seen a lot of the 16s in those. Um, that was gun smoke over the moor. So we've seen some great whiskeys coming out of those recharge hogsheads. And then we have nailed it, which we tasted tonight and Dr. Blowtorch. And again, our, and the 48.123. Um, an eight year and a first fill barrel. So that is the full list of everything that's getting released at one o'clock tomorrow. Um, so be sure you're logged into your accounts. And if you have fantastic. any plastic. Yeah, I think it's a nice variety of, of yeah, whiskey. You got, um, sure, you got some of the, yeah. the uh, wheat and fruities, which was the nailed it, which that definitely is a nice, that fits that category it's perfectly. such a good whiskey. You got some band-aids you got some heavy peat probably has some <laughs> of that charred meatiness in it that we talked about yeah i got some peat ghost in there <laughs> yeah man got some haunted haunted uh hospital going yeah on. I'm, I'm, I'm liking this out yeah. Good one. yeah our mid months are are always smaller than our kind of bigger releases at the beginning of the month but i think we always have some really special whiskeys in there and I mean, we definitely tasted through you know two of those tonight I, these whiskeys are really really fantastic so that cool. is that is our yeah so that's our full list so take a screenshot and you know tuck it away and just be ready at one o'clock tomorrow does refresh and uh refresh, yeah refresh refresh waiting for one o'clock refresh refresh yeah <laughs> and if you have any questions about them or any of the whiskeys we tasted today um you can always give us a call it'll be myself or um one of my incredible colleagues who i genuinely just love and adore um who will be on the other end of the phone to help answer any questions that you have. So it's awesome. Yeah. You guys well, this me. was, this was awesome. And I'm so stoked that we got to do this. And I'm glad to, I hope to, I didn't derail you yeah. too bad. I'm a bit worried. No. I get talky. If anybody follows me on my channels, they know I'm a bit no. of a talker. <laughs> so no, I, I, if I derailed you at all, we had to go. not at all. This is, this is what you would do if you were sitting, if we were sitting in person face to face, we would just talk and that's what you do with a glass of whiskey. You just yep. that have is a good time. True. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Good time. So sadly we, we can't do that quite yet because, you know, we're still being ruled by COVID, but yeah. um, hopefully, hopefully very soon, hopefully this fall we'll be back out there boots on the ground and, you know, pouring whiskey for people in person, which Doing it live. fingers crossed. Yes. I can't Doing wait. It live and in person. <laughs> 
yes, I can't. I'm going to want to hug every person I meet, <laughs> right. you know, but <laughs> it's going to be against the rule. <laughs> okay, just take the whiskey. But um, yeah, so this this was amazing. And I'm, I'm very grateful to, you know, have you and for giving us your time. So thank, well, thank you. you for having me on. I really, I, I, yeah. enjoyed it. I appreciate it. Anytime you guys yeah. want me to come on here and uh, ramble about whiskeys, just send me an invite. I'll be happy to join. All right. Perfect. Perfect. So thank you all for joining us tonight. And uh, again, these whiskeys go live at one o'clock tomorrow, Eastern time. So again, if you have any questions, please reach out and uh, we're happy to help. So I guess with that, oh, I don't have any whiskey in my glass. We have to cheers. Oh shit. Hold on. Yeah. I gotta, let me get a little extra whiskey in this glass. Yep. Me too. <laughs> it's actually, this cigar is making it really nice and sweet. I'm telling you, I gotta get you some of these cigars. Yeah. More spooky whiskey. Yeah, that's it. That's I'm down it. for it. So yeah. So thank you everyone for joining us, Jeremy. Thank you cheers. very much. Yes. Cheers. We'll see. We'll see you next time. <laughs>